Okay. We now consider the load, a triode load. It's very important. You remember that I told you the drawback of, I have already mentioned the drawback of the uh, saturated load. The voltage swing is less and the speed also is a little bit less. To improve upon it, intermediate, um, some intermediate um, phase was to use a triode load or linear load. And for that, we have to have two separate power supplies for the gate voltage and drain bias, gate bias and drain bias of the load transistor. And we have to ensure the condition that VGG should be more than VDD plus VT. And that is very important. I have to ensure this particular condition in order that the load transistor is in triode or linear region. The load must be in triode or linear region only if <coughs> VGG is greater than or equal to VDD plus VT. And therefore, naturally, we require two power supplies. We cannot manage it with a single power supply to achieve this. Now, to analysis of this is very similar. Only thing is, I have to write down the drain current, the load current, the drain current of the load transistor, which is appropriate for the linear region. I cannot use the saturation region expression, okay? And therefore, since the drain transistor is a load transistor, so driver is in linear or triad region, the appropriate drain current expression will be IDL means drain current of the load transistor expression will be beta L divided by 2 into 2 VGG minus Vt minus V0 into If you look the expression valid for the triode region or linear region behavior of a MOSFET, and then you find that the drain current now of the load transistor is given by this equation. What was the expression? Do you remember? Beta L by 2, beta by 2 into 2 into VGS minus VT into VDS minus VDS square. So here you see what is what is VGS? VGG minus V0. So VGG minus V0 is VDS, VGS of the transistor. What is VDS? VDD minus V0. Just I have done that. So I have used the appropriate equation to express the drain current of the load transistor. Now here you know that IDL is equal to 0 if VO is equal to VDD. If VO is equal to VDD, then IDL is equal to 0. All right? And when IDL will be 0? When this transistor is off? When driver is off? Because in the steady state, I have told you that this current and this current will be equal. We can neglect the value of the load current load being purely capacitive load. In the steady state under DC condition, load current is zero. Therefore, the drain, the driver current is equal to always the load current in the steady state. Please, this is only in the steady state. So, ideal will be zero when this driver transistor is off. 
that means when the input is below the threshold voltage and then output simply is VDD. So that's a great advantage. Here, therefore, we can conclude that VOH is equal to VDD and not VDD minus VT. So in this case, the output swings to VDD and not VDD minus VT and that is a great advantage you will get a lot more, much more logic swing than in the previous case. So definitely this is a positive feature. All right? Now, if we want to analyze the, uh, this particular configuration, which I normally call NELT, load in triad region, then I may follow exactly similar approach. Same, following the same logic, when the output voltage is near the high state, driver transistor will be in saturation. So I can use the corresponding equ current equation for the driver transistor. And when the output voltage is close to the zero state, then the driver transistor will be linear region. I can use the corresponding equation for the drain current equation for the driver transistor, and I can equate those currents with this IDL. Well, that is a condition. I always have to equate the driver current with the load current. And in the same manner, therefore, I am able to express, I can express, I can obtain relationship between output voltage and input voltage. So let us not go into the details of that. Let us show only the end results. Here what I shall do is, as before, I will substitute the following. I will write U as VO divided by VOH. <coughs> Please note VOH is VDD here. And we shall introduce a parameter, I will call it biasing parameter, which is this. I'll call it a biasing so uh, if in terms of u and m now ideal can be expressed like this beta l by 2 So what I have done, simply I have substituted, I have replaced VO by U, VO by H by U, and all these parameters taken together by a parameter M. Why I have called it a biasing parameter? Because it depends on the bias supply voltage, VDD and VGD. For a particular VDT, this is a parameter which is a function of VDD and V. That is why I have called it a biasing parameter. Whereas U is the normalized output voltage. So in terms of U and M, I get this simplified expression for IDL. Same IDL expression which I earlier, earlier wrote, I can rewrite in this format. Then, by equating the appropriate currents, I get the same thing. I get two relations. One is beta A R W square <coughs> is equal to 1 minus U into 1 minus m u divided by m for v o greater than equal to v i minus v t. This I am getting equation number 1. VO more than equal to VI minus VT means the driver transistor is in saturation. So I have written down the corresponding expression for driver current and equated with ideal and simplified and I get the following, I get equation number one which relates the input, W is the normalized input voltage with 
the normalized output voltage in terms of a biasing parameter. That is the extra thing. Similarly, I get the equation number 2, which is beta r, which you have to check yourself. <coughs> For the other case, when VO is less than or equal to VI minus VT. And W as before has been defined as VI minus, it is not exact, it is VI minus VT divided by VOH. Please note VOH is VDD. W is not exactly the uh, norm normalized input voltage, but VI scaled, VI minus VT shifted, VI minus VT divided by VOH. So you see that I have now obtained two equations relating the input voltage W with the output voltage U, W and U. For the two regions, one is VO is greater than VI minus VT for which the driver transistor is in saturation and then VO is less than or equal to VI minus VT for which the driver is in triode or linear region. And I can now, same thing I can do as, as I did before, as I requested you before. I can from these two equations, I can plot U versus W. I can plot U versus W for different values of beta R and M, because this beta R and M are the two parameters which have to be adjusted. Beta R is a geometry parameter and M is a biasing parameter. Uh, because of shortage of time, I cannot go into the details of those things, so I will give you again some end results, which you should verify yourself. You know, it is a thing, you know, you can spend some half an hour's time to write down small computer programs to verify all these things. I expect that from you. I expect that from you. But you are not, you know, uh, you are not satisfying me that way. And none, none of you have shown me a, a small program and the end result, output results, a plot. It was very interesting to you. It would have been very, very interesting to you. Anyway, let me see the end result now. So typically, some typical computation, this is not exactly in scale, just for giving an idea about how things change. Say so this is for beta r is equal to 4, 16, I have written as if 50. This is, please note that vt. And this is VDD. Similarly, I get the same, do the same thing for the other set.
sorry. So, you know that we just carefully see the three, curves, three sets of curves. In the first set, M has been kept 0.3. What is the value of M? You carefully see. What is M? VDD divided by VGG minus. So, M, smaller value of M means a higher value of VDG. Smaller value of M means a higher value. VDD is normally 5 volt, usually. So I have chosen a higher value of VGG so that M is reduced. So this is smaller value of M. And higher M means again, little bit less value of VGG. When VGG is equal to VDD, then what will be the value of M? When VGG is equal to VDD? Almost one, almost one, if I assume that Vt is small compared to Vdd. If Vt, the threshold voltage is small compared to unity, then M is equal to one means Vd is equal to Vd, so called that saturation. Or if I can, in fact, we say that the transistor is in saturation when M is equal to one, that is very much ensured. When M is equal to one, the light dry load is in saturation. But when M <coughs> gradually falls from 1 towards 0, the driver load transistor goes deeper and deeper, deeper into the linear region. So please note, a smaller M indicates more deeply linear region. linear region, whereas a higher value of M close to 1 means saturated load. So that should be clear. So point 0.3. And 0.7, what is your observation? For the same values of beta, 4, 16, and 50, what do you find? Lowering the value of M, what has happened? The characteristics have deteriorated. The shapes are, this is steeper. This is not that steep. So I will not achieve the kind of noise margin which I expect if M is less. But is it expected? Is it desirable? No. It's not desirable. But you know that you know that you are using the same MOSFETs, same technology, only are playing with some connections. You have not done anything. Same two MOSFETs, enhancement mode load and enhancement mode driver. Only thing is externally, in some case you have sorted the drain and gate. For the load transistor, in some other case, you have applied separate supplies and gate voltage has been floated to still higher bias. You have not <coughs> done any basic change. Only thing is externally some manipulation so far as application of voltages are concerned. And therefore, you cannot expect there will be a basic change. You may expect here something will be improved, but at the cost of others. In this case, you cannot expect that everything will improve. And that exactly has happened. You see that by using a smaller M means, by applying a higher value of VGG so that the transistor is deeply in linear region, you have lost the DC characteristics. You have lost, you have sacrificed to some extent the logic swing and noise margins. But what I have achieved? Yes, there has been some improvement in noise margin because my it is no longer in the higher side. My swing is up to VDD and not VDD minus VT. And that's a great advantage. So this is one thing. Though I have lost something because of the you know the slopes have been deteriorated, have been reduced. But same time, because at the, for the output. It goes to VDD and not VDD, so there is some advantage. But what is the main advantage? That is some advantage. I cannot say it is a great advantage, but what is the main advantage? 
which I mentioned in the earlier class. You know, because the load transistor is now in linear region, it offers a smaller resistance. So, the output capacitor will be charged more quickly. You remember that? Let's consider this. Here actually there is a capacitor. This goes to a capacitance. This is a capacitance load, CI. Similar, the capacitance which is offered by this, same, same thing. If the resistance is less, then this capacity will be charged more quickly. RC time constant is less. So in this case, when the transistor is in saturation, means transistor offers a very high resistance. DI, DVDI is very large. For a saturated transistor, you know, saturated region means the transistor behaves as a constant current source. When the transistor is in saturation, it behaves as a constant current source. Therefore, its effective dynamic internal resistance is very high. So, it takes a lot of time for this capacitor to be charged to the full swing. On the other hand, for the present case, when the transistor is in um, intentionally kept in triode region, it offers a much less resistance. Therefore, this charging delay of the capacitance, which I just told you, will be much less. So there will be a very much improvement in the speed of operation. And that is a major advantage of this circuit. For the NELT inverter, as compared to any LS inverter, the main advantage is in the speed of operation but not really in the DC characteristic. There is some an improvement in the output swing, definitely, <coughs> so for in the high end, in the higher end, but that is not the major thing. The major thing, it will give you a much higher speed than the other one. And you look at the character, so this is for M is equal to 0.3, this is M is equal to 0.7, and you see also the characteristic for a particular VTAR, but M varying. And by mistake, actually, this curve is for m is equal to 0.3, whereas this steepest curve is for m is equal to 1. M, please note that this by mistake I have shown. This curve with the smallest slope is for m is equal to 0.3, expected. Now the transistor is deeply in linear region. Whereas when m is equal to 1 means it is saturation you are getting a much better DC characteristics, but at the cost of speed. That is what I said. Because the technology is the same, <coughs> both the transistors are identical transistor in both cases, you cannot gain in every aspect. If you gain in one aspect, you have to sacrifice in some other aspect. Exactly that has been reflected here. Okay. <coughs> so our conclusion for this other configuration is, that so far as uh, the ratio is concerned, geometry is concerned, we don't have any benefit. I have to also always maintain, I think in some earlier class, I, I just uh, told something differently. Uh, please, you go through the earlier class notes. And where you found that while uh, discussing this one, I made a comment which in, I think as far as I can re recollect was not proper. So this is the actual thing. Actual thing is, when I change over from any LS to any LT configuration, I only gain in speed, but sacrifice in DC character, logic levels, noise margins, etc. But I have to maintain the same order of beta ratio in both cases. I cannot, you know, I cannot have a compact MOSFET inverter in the second case. There will be no benefit, no benefit so far as packing density is concerned. Rather, the packing density will be much lower. Why? Because we have to have, have a separate power line, bars bar, for the VGG, VGG supply. Now let us go to the more advanced inverter, which is called, I, which I told you that this I called is HMOS high performance in MOS. <coughs> okay. 
where technology is more complex, In this case, you note that the driver is a depletion mode driver. Sorry, the load is a depletion mode load. This is, of course, enhancement mode. Okay. Now, in this case, why the technology is more complex? Because on the same chip, side by side, the two adjacent transistors, one should be an enhancement mode transistor, the other should be a depletion mode transistor. And there is a more technological complexity involved. What is normally done, I think I have mentioned earlier, the threshold voltage of a MOSFET is controlled externally by a process called channel implantation. You remember, I have told that, discussed that. So by channel implantation, I can adjust the value of the threshold voltage. If I wish, I can convert a transistor from depletion mode to enhancement mode or vice versa. So that is done exactly. So in the technology is such, that I have two different implantations for the channel of the driver transistors and load transistor, and by the control of the implantation parameters, dose and energy, I can adjust the threshold voltage of the two transistors. I can make it depletion mode. In that case, normally, the threshold voltage is called a pinch of voltage. This is called pinch of voltage. The same name is pinch of, that is, for depletion mode device, Instead of writing threshold voltage, we prefer to write pinch of voltage. Borrowing the terminology from JFET. The terminology has been borrowed from JFET because JFET is basically a depletion mode device. By applying a certain gate voltage, we pinch off the channel. We turn, we turn off the device. Okay? And in this case, it is threshold voltage. And in order that the depletion mode is in this thing, we normally have to satisfy a condition that VDS must be equal to VGS plus VP. For driver, sorry, for load transistor. And that is ensured simply by short circuiting the two. This condition is ensured simply by source circuiting, gate and source. So it is normally on, it is kept on. When BGS is equal to zero, the transistor is on. All right? But in this case, I am only ensuring that this transistor will remain on always. But I am never ensuring that this transistor will be restricted to either saturation region or trial region. Am I doing anything for that here? <coughs> no. <coughs> so in this transistor, as the output, in this case, as the output voltage swings, the load transistor will swing from trial region to saturation region and back and forth. It will back, it will, it will ply between the saturation and non-saturation of trial region. Same, for example, when BO is high, 
it's a close to VDD. In, in this case also you'll find that the BOH is VDD. When VO is high, then this transistor is in, when VO is high, then this transistor is in saturation. VDS is high means saturation, the other side. And what is the VDS of this then? Low, because this is also VDD. So when VO is high or close to the high state, output is close to the high state, this transistor driver will be in saturation, whereas the load will be in triad region. And when VO is near the low state, zero state, driver will be in linear, load will be in saturation. So I, analysis is increasingly more complex compared to the earlier two. I have to know what is the current expression for the drain and load transistor and drain transistor for the two conditions, that means linear and non-linear regions. I should know that what are the input voltage ranges for which that is valid, and I must equate the two currents, again, in the same way, to obtain a relationship between the input voltage and output voltage. Going to be more complex, okay? And I, I do not wish to do that because unnecessarily we are, what I, I will just try to give you, I like to give it as a problem to you. Only thing what I will do, I will supply you the appropriate expression for this transistor. Okay, I will supply you the appropriate expressions for this transistor. So that is this. For the load transistor, which is a depletion mode, MOSFET. And we have kept the condition that VGS is equal to zero. That I have maintained. By short circuiting the gate and source, I have maintained this condition. Therefore, the transistor is on always. At least I have kept the transistor on for the entire cycle of operation. Okay? And the corresponding expression for IDL is beta L by 2 into VGS plus VP whole square for saturation region and IDL is equal to beta L by 2 into twice um, VGS. Same thing, only thing is VT has been replaced by minus VP. The equation is the same. So what I have done? I have written down the e appropriate equations for the load current. When the load transistor is in saturation and when the load transistor is in triad region. The equations are the same, excepting that Vt has been replaced by minus Vp. Okay? What will be the typical value of Vp for any one of you? Plus or minus. So sine automatically do the same thing. If I had written Vt, it is valid. It's automatically the same thing. Now, um, the approach is very similar. You write down the corresponding equations for the drain transistor, for the uh, driver <coughs> transistor. Equate the current. Only thing you have to know what are the ranges of voltages. What are the ranges of voltages? I think let me give the responsibility to you, not to me, because you know it is very similar and it will be just repetition of the same thing. So again, 
Let me just give you the, what is the gist of what is the end result which you obtain by this analysis, which will throw some light for the performance of this inverter. The end result is something like this. This is a very interesting thing. You will find that here for any value of beta r, maybe 3 or 10 or 50, there is a region where the slope is very, very high. That means there exists a point of inflation, inflection and the tangent is perpendicular to the x-axis. Whatever may be the value of beta r, a low value or high value, the characteristic is such that it is not, it does not, it does not start with a linear region initially. You saw that it is very similar, it is anti-symmetric around this line. If I draw this vertical passing through the point of inflection, then the characteristic is anti-symmetric about it. <coughs> Repeat, there is a round off here, there is a round off here. You expect it, you know, because the output, the load transistor is swinging from triad to saturation region and vice versa. So you don't expect some linear behavior here as we were expecting in earlier cases. So you'll find there is an input voltage of for which for a considerable for the same input voltage, the output swings quite appreciably. That means over a considerable output voltage swing, input remains constant, whatever the value of beta r may be. So what is the thing here? What is the, I know that positive aspect of it? Yeah, because in this case you can achieve a good noise margin even with a smaller value of beta r. It is found a beta r typically around 5 <coughs> is quite okay for a practical inverter in this case. For a practical inverter, with high performance inverter, if you maintain beta r is 5 is okay. It is found that for, for this part. That is why it is an interest, you know, that if you are really interested, you can again do this uh, same problem and try to find out the characteristics and play with beta r and see what is exactly happening. Because whatever I am saying is just some outcome of some, you know, the general observation, a qualitative observation. But you can make it quantitative if you consider those equations and write a small program. <laughs> for getting the output out input relationship. And in fact, if you can do it, some of you can, of course, I know that this is now almost at the end of your, you know, at um, four year course, and you are not perhaps getting much time because of interview and other things. But if you can, if some of you can spare some time, you can check it. And you'll find that you'll, you'll get some enlightenment where the, how the various MOS inverters work under different conditions. and. Then, 
this transistor, this inverter configuration, where the transistor is in a depletion, where the, where the load transistor is a depletion mode device, I find there is an improvement. There is a basic improvement, major improvement, over the other two configurations. So far as the packing density is concerned, I can have a much higher pack, that way I can achieve a very high density VLSI using this kind of MOSFETs, inverters, rather than the earlier two. But do you uh, have any other benefit here? Do you have any other benefit here? The one benefit is, again, the same one single power supply, no need of two power supplies. Smaller transistor sizes because of the low beta ratio, high packing density. But from speed point of view, is there any advantage? One of the transistors ah, is already in charge. Ah, right, no. The output transistor, both the earlier phases also, the load transistor was always on. We ensured that. But in one case, the load transistor was in saturation. The other case, it was in linear region. But in this case, the load transistor is arranged to be maintained on always, conducting always for the entire cycle. But for some parts of cycle, the load transistor is in triad region or linear region, and for some parts, it is in saturation. Therefore, we cannot expect a speed as high as that of the NELT configuration. But definitely, in this case, speed will be much more than the NELT, NELS. If you compare the inverter with saturated load, then this device will have achieved much higher speed. So comparing now, you see that I have got, I've got benefits in every aspect. I have now a higher speed, better logic, so higher logic swing because it can also be shown that the output VOH will be VDD in this case also. It will not be limited to VDD minus VT. So VO in this case also, VOH will be VDD. VOL can be kept quite low by proper design. And beta R is also quite low, quite low. And speed, high. High means may not be as high as which is possible in the case of any LT configuration. But considering every aspect, this is much better than because you know that we don't have to have, to have another power line, etc. So there's a great advantage. And that is why this particular inverter was almost universal you know, during the 70s. During the 70s, when the MOS, by MOS IC, we mean normally in MOS IC. And it was usually an HMOS, means a high performance in MOS inverter with depletion mode load. But technology definitely is more complicated. We need two implantations and two other things. From, from technology point of view, it was more difficult. But it was very quickly solved. The problem was quickly solved. As you have seen today, that technology has been matured to such an extent. Today, even CMOS is giving hundreds of picosecond delay. You know? CMOS, which is, which is known to be a very slow device compared to other things. But even CMOS is giving that. So it, today's taking scale, it is very simple, rather simple. But for your information, that NMOS is being used today only in limited applications, in practical cases. What are the fields where still NMOS is being used? In most technology is still quite popular. One is the uh, memories, memories, memory chips. Still, in most is quite popular. Then you know that CMOS people are using nowadays. It's CMOS technology where we use only very few PMOSs rather than many PMOSs. The bulk quantity of MOSs are in MOSs. Only few MP MOSs per certain level. So this you can call pseudo CMOS 
or pseudo NMOS technology. Pseudo NMOS or pseudo CMOS technology. So you know that today, uh, in this, these are the two fields where still today NMOS is being used extensively. On the other hand, most of the logic circuits have been replaced by CMOS today. Uh, one of the transistors is always linear. Both the transistors are switching. Linear, don't be confused. Both the transistors are passing from linear to saturation. So what you are, you are asking? When uh, output voltage is high, uh -huh. then the load is in uh, linear region and the uh, driver is in saturation. And uh, when the output voltage is low, yeah. the driver is in linear region and the load is in saturation. So uh, the charging, the transport speed, uh, it is comparable, uh, comparable to any other configuration. You know, it will be, you know that, because the transistor, what is happening? When this capacitor is getting charged, just try to see what is happening. Initially, when this voltage was low, view was low, this transistor was in saturation. <coughs> so during the initial cycle of charging, this transistor was in saturation. So it was offering a higher effective resistance. Then as the voltage is increasing, this transistor is passing into the linear region. Its resistance is gradually falling. So what is important to observe is that the average resistance offered by the load transistor here during the charging of the output capacitive node will be less than that for the any LS configuration and higher than that for any LT configuration. Well, in NELT, we have always kept in, we had always kept in linear region. So that is not possible here. So effective resistance, the average, if I make a time average of the dynamic resistance offered by this load transistor, during the charging of this capacitor, you will find that average resistance is something intermediate between that for saturated load and linear load. Therefore, naturally, it is expected. You can go into the details of calculation for time tangent, etc., and you'll find that it offers you for the same geometry, for the same minimum feature size. This will give you little bit slower speed compared to the any LT configuration, but definitely much higher speed compared to the any LS configuration. But at the same time, it offers some, all the advantages of any LS single power supply for drink. But it gives some additional advantage, and what is that additional advantage? The beta ratio is less, higher packing density. Then that question now I may ask you, because all these things come and you have to think, you know, why I have got in the second, con in the third configuration, better features in every aspect? Whereas in the second configuration, I got better feature in one aspect, but worse features in other aspects. The second configuration, I got that. But the third configuration, I have got better feature almost in every aspect. Why? Yeah, because here yeah, it is not the same transistors. <laughs> I have made some changes. This transistor remains the same, but the other transistor is a different transistor. There has been a change. That's why you know we say that from one logic family to another logic family, as we pass over, the figure of merit power delay product changes. But for the same logic family, power delay product is normally constant. If power is more power is consumed, less higher will be the delay. Less will be the delay. If less power is consumed, higher will be the delay. For the same logic, say for example, consider ECL. But as you consider TTL, the, again it has got a characteristic power delay product. Consuming more power, less will be the delay, and so on and so forth. Therefore, it is the technology, which is the innovativeness in the devices, which improves the overall performance. But if you don't make any basic change, and you make some extra 